Microphone check, one, two, what is this? We are here on the off day. Let me tell the people how this came to be. All right. Uh, I DM'd you, and I felt odd, because as a man, <laughs> you don't really DM men. <laughs> right, right? Let's just, let me just you be can. honest. We don't DM men, honestly. I nah, but if it's a purpose, yeah. No, I don't, still don't DM men. But we got it off, and I said, yo, man, love what you're doing. Keep it up. Uh, and we had that exchange. And then randomly out the blue, I said, yo, I'd love to have you. And you just happened to be in the city, in New York City. That's right. Right, right. Um, and yeah, we DM for business. I'm good with DMs for business. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is, the, uh, this is about the third or fourth time I've been to Manhattan in the last six months. And uh, probably back in a couple of three weeks, but... I wanted to make sure I got a chance to get by here because I'm about to do a lot of, a uh, lot more collaborations. I'd already done with No Jumper about a couple of months ago. Um, and the thing is, I want to get out and talk to as many people who are not used to what I say because many people are getting introduced to me uh, off of clips. And, they really, and you really can't kind of gauge anything off a of clip other than what they want you to gauge. So I'm like, well... If, you, if you're going to say something like I say, even on my show, you need to take it to as many people, friendly or not, and be able to have a conversation. And if nothing else, you get credit for at least showing up and having a combo. So. Well, I have to be honest with you. I, I've spoken to a few people to let them know that I was doing this <laughs> interview. Some of them were women. Yeah. And boy, were they angry about it. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, they killed me. They kicked my ass. So I love you. I, I love everybody. But how do you feel? Do you know that that, that that, do you know that that feeling is out there? I know that feeling exists for a vocal minority. Uh, what I also know is mm. I get the videos of women saying, thank you, Kevin Samuels, for saving my marriage. Kevin Samuels is the reason I'm engaged. And if you watch my show instead of the clips, you'll see women all the time coming on saying, you know what? When I first heard you, I didn't know what to think about it, but I sat back and I listened to it myself end to end. And I can't deny I agree with a lot of things you're saying. I've even tried some of these things and I'm a better friend, a better daughter, better sister, a better cousin, a better wife, a better girlfriend. My current generations, my future generations, thank you. So uh, I'll take any of the critics because what they don't do they don't come and actually con talk to me when I have my smoke show. Mm. I open it up at least 30 to every 30 to 45 days and say, and you have plenty of notice. Come on, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So, you know, I believe there's a, there's a certain amount of people who are detractors. And I also think my, my name is kind of popular right now. So it makes for good clicks. That so, but if you really have a problem with it, let's talk about it. I agree. And that never really tends to happen. Got it. So what's, what's, what's your background? How did you kind of get started into uh, your your show? Uh, well, it's a long path. Um, you can paraphrase. My, my, ba my background is pretty much this. Um, I spent most of my adult life in corporate sales. Uh, that's how I actually got to New York City. Spent some time in advertising and marketing. But the net, net of it is, as an image consultant, I was finding my male clients, when they were coming in, getting becoming the best version of themselves, they kept coming back with the same thing. Looking for, looking for women, women on my level, my new level, my adjusted level, and I'm not finding any women who really are fitting what I'm looking for. Now, see, what we have been told is a lot of guys don't want relationships or marriage or this or that, and that's really kind of the opposite. What I'm, but many of the guys are saying, I'm trying to find somebody who wants to work with me and not wanting to be at odds with me. So um, I came onto YouTube years ago speaking to men. Three plus years of videos just speaking to men and no one cared. Mm -hmm. But uh, around Jan around June of last year, after I did a show that was almost like a line, like a Shark Tank kind of show, I started speaking to women because 
I've been speaking to women since 1989, back when we were doing these things on college campus. We'd have these relationship seminars, these dating seminars, back when Shaharazad Ali's book came out and caused all that whirlwind. We've been talking about relationships for the longest. So just like anybody else, I got a point of view and an opinion, and I just started talking to women about some of the things I've seen and a lot of things I'm hearing from men, and that kind of caught a moment. And, of course, one video got onto World Star, and it had some traction, but, of course, you know, the average of best video mm. is the one that really blew up. And I said, you know, over 200,000, that, that, that wasn't about me. That's about us. That video did numbers that... I've looked on their page, and I haven't seen videos with eight years with that amount of views. Uh, people were from coast to coast contacted me and told me over the weekend they were watching the entire video and, and having, like, love-in, lock-ins and having this conversation. It started a conversation. And my thing is, it's actually started a conversation with women that men have always been having. We had this conversation on the basketball court, playing dominoes, spades in the barbershop. barbershop. And, when we can re- and when we can take them no cussing signs off, when we can be men like we grew up being, not these new uh, grass-eating lions like we have to be today, no cussing in the barbershop, you know, men can't be men anywhere, we actually say what is on our mind. Now, the things that a lot of men are wanting are the same thing they've always wanted cooperation but that's what men across the board are seeming to get in in, in 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 diminished quantities and what we do here is we hear it all from one side from color purple to exhaling to everything else we hear what women want great well i have one question to the women what do the kind of men you want want from a woman? And that's when you get cricket ass quiet. You can't man. ask that shit, no. man. Well, well, <laughs> you, man. Sam, could you? Well, the problem, Sam, the problem, Sam, the problem could you give the man some credit the, the for grass eating lions? Yeah. Give him some Listen, credit for man. grass eating lions. Listen, man. The problem is you used to could not ask because before, I mean, I, you know, you guys are used to all this. You artists, musicians, and everything else. I come from the corporate side. But one thing I do know, 52 years old, that if you needed to, if you wanted to get out and speak to the public, you had to go through some sort of FCC regulated something. Mm -hmm. ABC, NBC, CBS, PBS, if there was anything. um, And then outside of New York City, you know, AM, FM radio, the media was controlled. And the media's job is to sell advertising, which I sold. And if you're going to have programs on during the daytime, you better sell advertising to the people who you got to give them the program they want. Yeah. Even Gillette is Gillette razors is sitting around telling a man how to be new kind of men. Mm-hmm. Now you got a men's product, luxury men on how to be better men. I'm like, what are French? What, what, where the, where the, where the women's products telling women? How about just be nice? Softer side of Sears. Just be nice. I mean, so what we haven't done is we, the, the, the marketplace, this does what it does. If 73 cents out of every dollar is spent in this country, spent by women, you better give a marketing message to the people who spend the money. That makes sense. Problem is we get an unbalanced um, view of things, and the net net of it is the modern dating environment is not working. It's falling apart. And people are not getting together here, other places. The hookup economy, all these things are existing. And here's the thing. Women are unhappy with the outcomes. Women are vocal about their out. Women have no problem being vocal about the things they don't like. Men have learned not to say anything. You fucking right, you we did. You yeah. can't say that. Yeah. yeah, we did. Yeah, he no, did. Because, no, we did. Because, I know, I agree. Because, you, I, 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 some of me has to believe that you have to subscribe to some of the myths of the woman that you want to sleep with. Mm. Well, I will say this. Men have learned that if I say too awesome. too much truth, I will be canceled. I'll lose money. I'll Indeed. lose deals. I'll Absolutely. lose this. Especially in entertainment. Yes. So it becomes, sure. so it become. who buys the concert tickets and the shirts and everything else? So men, mm. in a business interest, we're practical. We're cost-benefit calculators. What's the benefit to what I'm going to say versus the cost? Now, what's happened is, mm-hmm. I hate the term social media. Social media has happened. Um, so it has democratized uh, the access to the airwaves. The smartphone and high-speed internet access has taken away the has has leveraged the power that the uh, TV stations, the cable stations, and the radio stations used to have. 
you needed to go to them to build an audience. Indeed. Now you can build your own audience. And I just built an audience talking about the things that matter to my audience. That and now, so, so now, but so now they can't quote unquote cancel you as easy. They still can, but um, you still have different outlets. There have always been men saying uh, things that are kind of pushing the envelope, um, but now it's becoming, I won't say more acceptable. Uh, it's it's starting to happen with more frequency. I'll say that. Okay. I agree. Whole, wholeheartedly. <laughs> <laughs> anybody you know anybody in here familiar with Jordan Peterson? No. 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 Dr. Jordan Peterson. Dr. Jordan Peterson, he's a psychiatrist, psychologist out of uh, Canada. He made a big splash by rejecting a mandate from the, from, uh, from the government of Canada, basically saying that you have to call somebody by their designated pronoun that they chose. It wasn't that he didn't want to call them by their pronoun. He just rejected to being the infer- the uh, man uh, the uh, codif- the codification the codification of speech. He didn't want his free speech to be incurred upon. So he became worldwide phenomena for basically standing up saying, "You cannot in law tell me how I have to address somebody. I can choose to do that or not." He's never said he wouldn't do that. He just said he doesn't want it to be law. Men like that. Um, are starting. He started a movement, more or less. I would say not started a movement. He's he's caught a wave on the movement, and he went from being really relatively unknown to in a short period of time gaining two million followers on YouTube, may, earning like four or five hundred thousand dollars a month on Patreon, and he, he's a professor in Canada. And you know one of the when one of the things that he said that slipped under the radar. He basically told men to, you need to go clean up your room. Basically saying men need to be men. But what got him in hot water was the fact that he actually just said, you can't tell me how I have to talk, speak to somebody in law. And however, on the other side, you have no problem how you speak to us. And that's where we kind of are right mm. now. What most of my critics never say is what I'm saying is wrong. They just don't like the tone. The delivery. The delivery uh, or the harshness who, or, 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 they or, hear. or 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 let's be honest, who the hell do you think you ought to even say something like Indeed. that? Well, to that, you say what? Because let me tell you, sir, if I was calling somebody, hey, ma, you build like Emmett Smith, it would I would it, I would have a, a long week. I would have a long week. You would. I, OK, yeah, well, because you what? can't say that Why? but let me even ask you this though no 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 conversely conversely when he's asking a woman that only wants a certain type of man what is your entitlement your personal entitlement why do you feel that you can get this if it was a woman saying she wanted a certain type of, i mean if it was a man saying he wanted a certain type of woman, women will all come to the, in masses and droves saying, you don't qualify for her. Well, why can't he say that. it? And that's, and that's the, the, the doctor that he just referenced saying, yo, you can't tell me by law what I can say, mm-hmm. right? They're telling him the same thing. Like, you can't say that. Shoot. <clears throat> I don't want no scrub. A scrub is a guy Ooh. that can't get no love from Ooh. me. Hanging out the passenger side of his best friend's ride, trying to holler at me. <laughs> Women have no problem telling me at what all. they don't want. At Matter of fact, they can become rich <laughs> saying it. At all. And mm-hmm. if I just happen to say, ma'am, and I was wrong, she actually weighed more than Emmett Smith or Barry Sanders. <laughs> I mean, and see, the thing is, let's flip it up. Women have no problem telling men under five foot seven. I don't want no short I don't dude. Want a, I don't want yeah. a short, I don't want yeah. short dude. I mean, think about on my show that women call into my show voluntarily. Mm. They know what it is and they're calling in saying, regardless mm. of their situation, I want a man who's making the kind of money to be able to provide for a family of two or three or better. I don't want to have to work to pay significant bills. Mm. And regardless as to how I come to the table, that's what I want. And I ask, why can't you just get an average regular guy? All the time. And how often do these women laugh? They, See, we have time. no problem when women are laughing at half the male population That's or true. more. That's true. But when a man just happens to say, you know what, ma'am? Objectively, you weigh more than a man at your height. But, li- but listen to this, though. Now, again, Kevin already said that he's coming from that corporate side. Mm-hmm. 
we have this conversation all the time of what's happening now at, at currently in entertainment. The women are the ones that's kicking ass out here. No, not just entertainment. The, the, the same in way corporate that, that, America. He, that he just spoke about uh, the professor that's getting it on Patreon. The women have a lot of outlets okay. to where, yeah, now we reversing this. Okay, so now. It's me with the bag. No longer do I have to rely on you, adhere to your rules, your thinking, your demands. And that's why it's up. And that's where all these phrases are coming from. City girl summer. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Hot girl summer. Hot wait, wait, wait. Girl wait. Girl summer. Yeah. So with right? that being said, women are killing. Especially yeah. like, kudos to black women. They're 1, killing corporate America. They're killing Kill all these entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial yeah. ventures. They're doing all these amazing things, right? I mm-hmm. disagree. The numbers say different from from past. I say different. I say, okay, oh. I disagree. Okay, we, that's the marketing. Mm-hmm. The numbers say different. Um, we we've heard black women. You're the most educated. We've heard that, right? I won't say that. We've heard that. We've heard black women are more, most educated. You're the most enrolled. See, we, we play slick and loose when we start. Let me say something. Set the table. A man's past or a woman's past or her story is used to mythologize. A man's past or his story is typically used to demonize. To black demonize. man's past or his story is typically used to villainize you. Yeah. So we can say women are doing this, women are doing that. They kill. Okay, then let's take that thing. Women are killing it. I accept your premise. They're killing it. They're out here entrepreneurs. They're business people. They're moving and shaking. City girls, summer, blah, blah. Why are one for you on some sort of psych man? Why, are, why is the weight of the typical woman up? And why are more women today the most free, the most liberated, the most educated, the more anything else, the least happy of any woman has ever existed? I, can. I, I can't speak to their, I their, can't. their happiness. Because they're not, cause, because the things that typically make women happy are relationships. Indeed. They've calibrated, they're the, they're the social of the two. And many women have all the things that on paper Society are supposed to make you happy, but they don't have the relationship Indeed. or the family. And that is where this is all falling apart. I mean, you got to think about it. If I was not saying something to make sense, why do I have anywhere from 20 to 30,000 people watching consistently, even with the women being so angry? Because what they're recognizing is something is missing. When I used to have my MIT, my men in training seminars, I would say, guys, the first thing I would do is take them to a city overlooking downtown. I'd say, gentlemen, life happens out there. Number two word, life is about people. Life is about relationships. And one thing this coronavirus pandemic showed to women in general Unfortunately, black women in particular is when you shut the world down, you shut it down. You could not go to work. Many women had to look to the left, to the right, to the front and back. And there was nobody there. No husband, no kids, no family, no network. They're just sitting there. And that gave them a glimpse into the glimpse into their possible future. All things being equal. If you keep living the way you're living, this is what it's going to end up being. And it panicked people for the first time because. It took an act of God to actually start this conversation. That's when my podcast started picking up because for the first time, men and women were at home. Men have always known this. Let me tell you, just not to interrupt. Can I get some applause? As, as someone, as, well, <laughs> I need no, some applause. As, as someone whose podcast was rocking before the pandemic, boy, was I mad at all you new flourishing podcasts. <laughs> get out of here. Yo. But yeah, I will hit the round Listen of applause. Listen to what he just said. I, I will, let me hit the round of applause like you asked. It, I'm scared to fucking... No, it <laughs> took, it took an act of God for somebody to now do some self soul searching but won't so, but won't it always no, yeah but again for women that are speaking against him right the the well, corp the corporate movers and shakers well and the funny thing is it's a it's a certain kind of woman is loud it's typically college educated yes mid 30s uh and they realize that i'm generation x we i say we were lied to we were sold to bill of goods i talked about how Cosmopolitan magazine marketed a lifestyle to women. They wanted to be the playboy of women. I did a broadcast about that two months ago, talking about the book Subverted, how they openly admit that we lied to a generation of women just to sell you products. I don't begrudge us for how we got here, but we got to acknowledge if one out of four of you in our, in our community, if one out of four women will marry anybody, black women will marry anybody, that means three out of four of you will die unmarried. Uh, 
that matters once you are past hot girl summer and once you pass your earning potential. Once all that stuff is gone, then what? And see, that's what started to happen. And, 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 and it's all been conversation until that. If you went to the grocery store in March of 2020, the first time I'd ever seen fear in women's eyes is when they were there. Because what I tended to see in Atlanta, in the grocery store, I tended to see a lot of guys. But unfortunately, when I saw a black woman, I tended to see her there, no ring on, and panicking, no, no, no water, no toilet paper. I'm like, this is like the real live Book of Eli, Walking Dead. This is what it looks like when the, men, the world that men built that you don't need stops running. And I've talk, I don't just talk about things from just a look standpoint and this and that. I say, okay, many women don't really understand what they need a man for uh, outside of provision and sex. But the pandemic showed that, you know what, having somebody to the, to the right of you to help for many other things is valuable. That's why this show was kind of picked up. Now, who are the women that typically are upset? One. The women who typically know they're not trying to be anywhere other than a partner. The word submission is a curse word. The, the, the word is all these newfangled things. Um, the women who tend to be making more than the average woman who actually thinks being with a man um, limits her versus uh, frees her up. I'm like, all right. And the net net of it, I ask all women, even, your, even women who say don't like me. Are they coming into interactions with men in good faith? Or is they already coming in thinking that something's going to go wrong? Or are they coming in with fear and scarcity and lack in their mentality? Is there any hope when you deal with a man? Or is it always, I want a man who's this, 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 this whole laundry list of stuff to where he's having to deal with issues, traumas, things that you've not resolved in your past. And you take that to the next man and you say, all right, then what is he going to get in exchange for that? Me. See, I just think that everything he just said is applicable to both of them. Yeah. It is. I agree. It is. That, that, that's I all. Agree with that. I'm, I'm it, totally it with him. definitely. Like, listen, a lot of my favorite restaurants, they, they didn't make it out the pandemic. They, they didn't make a lot of my a lot of my homies and what they did. I was blessed that I was in a field where we were we were thriving. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, they was people was fucked up out there. I so agree. I saw a panic in the street. Yeah. I heard panic. When my people was on the phone, from both, from both. Right? Listen, I went on the, I went on the internet and gave my money away. I believe you, but yeah. what he's saying is for these independent thinkers, quote unquote, that always tout that they don't need a man. I don't need no man for this. I don't need no man for that. God just showed you. Yes, you do. Well, see, the difference but do they is, really need them? The difference like, is yes. The difference is men have always understood that ain't nobody coming to save you. There ain't nobody coming to save you. The world doesn't care about your problems because all you got to do to see what happens to a man who's been on Wall Street and now he's living in the park. We know that can happen to us. Mm-hmm. Right. Women of any society have been shielded from the, from, the, from the harshness of the world. Well, when you can't continue to shield women, women from that, then they have to start dealing with it. You as a man know, if I'm driving a car, I got to be able to handle what happens with coming with this. Most women just think I'll just call somebody. I can bet. I, 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 I can something's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And, and so but, what does that mean? What does that mean? could just call yeah, somebody. Yeah, that's what say. What's wrong with that? Like, we shit. don't have watch that this. luxury. No, watch this. Well, well, but that comes with a certain point, realization. Point, well, let me, let me the point I'm getting to is that women, men of a society have always known if you can't produce a cover for yourself, the streets or the, or the park is for you. Mm-hmm. Right. Women don't. They will make a demand of society. Go to Korea. Go to Japan. Those are two countries that are dying. Their population is aging out. People are being found living in their places dead for three or four days. It's called Kodukoshi. They gave it a name because the people under 35 are not marrying and dating. But here's the thing. You have women who are pet groomers, florists, teachers. That's not rich money. But they make demands of society. I, you, um, I, I told a story the other day. When I was broke in school, I had to sell a textbook. I had to go without, tighten your belt. Men talk about, we, we, we talk about how broke it was, eating sardines for dinner and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
cup of noodles. You didn't want but, no but, sardine smoke with me. But but I when when I actually started dating a woman who was in uh, another school, she was eating well, shrimp, crab, lobster, and everything else. I'm like, where you getting all this money? No, you broke food stamps. He's like, I'm a college student. I I I, I can qualify for food stamps. That never would have crossed my mind never. to go get food stamps never. because men accept if I don't have it, I don't get it. Women have been shown that if I don't have it, someone will do it for me. I could, I could do you I know what for it. Or, or, and it's like, you know, I had a program where I asked a woman, and she's like, no, I was talking about survival. And if you got, and for the women who think I'm, I'm full of shit, go do this. Go watch, go to Amazon Prime. Go watch Bear Grylls, The Island, season two. Where they drop a group of men on one island, a group of women on an island for six weeks, and they got to just survive. By the end of day one, men that got from one side to the other made a beachfront and start building and doing things, thriving. By the end of six weeks, men that damn near made the internet. And, and this is what he says. I, I saw the interview by on the end of Sad fifth back. week, By the end of week five, what the girls doing? By, the, yeah. by the end of the week five, they were still trying to lead by committee because no, because no one, they didn't want to be led by nobody. Yeah, well, you know girls don't be like each other. But they, they, <laughs> that's the point, they, though. They, 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 have a, they have a system. <laughs> no, the first thing, you three, three minutes without water, three minutes without air, three days without water, three weeks without food. <laughs> Women cut their water making ability in half because they didn't want to wash out a container. Because these were modern British women who have grown up not having to do anything except go to the grocery store, this, that. You don't need a man in your house because you got 911. Yeah, but what happens when these systems stop working? Yes. When there's no more. So I will say this that men and women, while we may have the similar situations, Men understand that I got to get it out of the mud. I got to I got to disagree with you a little bit though, because it's a lot of women, because there was no man figure there, having to get it out the mud. Where 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 they get where where they get it from? Survival. They had to. There, there was no uh, nowhere else what, to get though? it from. Such as what? I'm talking about women with multiple kids that. If they they don't bring it home, the kids ain't eating. So they're gonna do whatever. He's so saying, where did where they, they go get it from? Yeah, where's the where's they, they what, went out and so got they it? They say mud. food. Where they get the food from? Well, they went and made. Some, they did whatever they had to do to make some money to get this food. It's such to, as whether it's, I mean, listen, from the top to the bottom, they out there on the pole. So if they you prostituted there, yourself, where did you get that money from? You got it from a man. Yeah, but some not all women, the, I'm, single I'm, mothers, and prostitutes. I'm giving no. I'm going to the bottom. I'm going all the way to the bottom. This is what I see. This is what tends to happen. I accept your premise, but what? Where they get it from? Because w- legally, where they get it from? Work two jobs. Work yeah, work a couple jobs. What, what, so you said it still comes from a man. Well, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm, saying that because okay. what I'm asking is, were these women getting any kind of government aid? Oh, sometimes, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, probably sometimes. Sometimes that, not. That's a man. No, let's be honest. You getting get you getting whether well, you got Section Eight food stamps? It's still coming from a government, which is the taxpayers of a men. I know single mothers that don't I use receive my moms assistance. As an okay, example, we, know, we, like, know they, no, we know we you know they know exist. I mean? All of our parents were. We know out they the exist, mud but kinda. still, <laughs> you <laughs> women use the system more than men do. So when we say they get it out of the mud. You tell me, getting out of the mud, and are the and is it the same mud that men would have to get it out of? Okay, but that's not the woman's fault. That wait, so wait, 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 hold up. So fault. wait, it's not about fault. It's no, not, I'm, saying, have, I'm, saying, have, I'm not going to knock the women for that. If, if it's not knocking a guy could go and get a guy could go get on the either. system if he was a single, if he could try that, like you said, the the college no, student, see, you didn't what, know see, to get on food stamps. You didn't no, think no, that. I didn't know because I don't because I don't because ta- I know as a man that's not that's not what it's there for. It's not to eat shrimp and lobster and crab. But you. Not just that, they're not as willing. This is what I'm saying. To, this is what I'm saying to Ice's yeah. point. I do know that this exists what what he's saying. But like, did you ever hear that 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 uh there's a bit that says if white if white people could be dropped in any era and choose what what mm-hmm. they wanted to be, they would choose white. Because why wouldn't they choose white? Right. All of this bullshit comes mm-hmm. with being white. Mm-hmm. So that's what I feel like with the women. Yeah, all of this exists. Absolutely right. But why would they ever want to change that? That's like a superpower. But then, wait, wait, wait. Hold up. Let me answer you. If I could just sit down and send my and and say something and it come to me? Now, now watch this. You can't pick and choose though when you want the best 
all the time. So, wait, don't cut me off. You know how many wait, wait, wait. people going to the Gucci store spending their shit? We just seen it with these checks they getting. Yeah. Niggas is taking the checks and going to the mall. I know, but so watch, I think that's common. Oh, taking this on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, to answer your question, if you can't, and, that, and that's the truth, if you have an advantage, it's not human nature to want to give up the advantage. Indeed. Here's the problem. Yeah. Don't complain about the people exactly. who give you the advantage. Exactly. Because see, I hear a lot of this, women get it out of the mud and this and so forth, and then I ask questions three levels deep and it all falls apart because it's like, well, they're really not getting it like, like I'm saying they're getting it. It's, and it's different because the bottom line is men understand you have to produce. Men produce in mass. Women consume in mass. Of course, we can find anecdotal exceptions across the board. But in general, I have a, a year worth of a show talking to women across from one thing to another. And when given an opportunity, women want men to be providers. Fine. But are you the traditional women that you, the, the, but are you the traditional woman that a man is supposed to provide for? No. And that's no. my point. Yeah, yeah, so that, my point I agree, is I agree with you that. can't pick and choose when you want a traditional. traditional old school guy. My grandma, my grandfather did X, Y, and Z. My grandfather provided, and your grandmother shut up and took what came with that. Your grandmother knew how to cook a sweet potato pie. You don't. Your grandfather. So you can't pick and choose when you want to be a new era woman, <laughs> but, with it. and then it, and when it benefits you, be an old school woman. You can't do that. You can't say I want a traditional relationship over here when it's beneficial, and then now you want to be a new age woman when it's beneficial. You can't do that. You can't okay. say you get what I'm saying. Like you want to go well, out to one thing. Okay. One thing that bothers people about my show is I'm just let I, I talk to women who call into the show in real time I'm not just I'm not making it up you can go hear what they're saying and many women are like what are you going to argue with I had a woman 31 years old the other day talking about the same thing God going to send me a husband God going to send me a husband God going to send me a husband and then turns out that you know it's up on my channel right now do you know how to cook? Do you know how to do this? Do you know how to do that? Are you a, are you a Christian wife? Cause you talking about God with these long eyelashes and everything else, and are, and it turns out that you said I'm a cooperative woman and I'm a Christian, but then when I ask you about your per previous relationships, you run the men off because of your mouth. Now, that's not cooperation. What we've been that's told not, is the problems in relationships. The problem, what we've been told and marketed to, from color purple, which was BS. There was the controversy around the color purple at the time it released. Go look at it. It's still on microfiche. They said the impact that movies had on the black culture is rever is 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 been catastrophic. Before 1965, we were married at a rate of 80 80 percent, 80 percent. The most married people in Jim Crow segregation and everything else. But after that, what do we have? Now we get color purple, waiting to exhale. Then, you know, we mentioned uh, Brother Tyler Perry and all his movies. We get a woman's side of it, and it's always the man of the problems. Okay. But there's a reason we always get the woman's side of it. No, I said that this morning. Did I not? There's always there's a reason. I said that this morning. I know morning. that's the Tyler reason. Perry it's, movies. It's profitable. Yeah, I don't really yeah. like it. Yeah. It's profitable. Okay. Pop, Pop told us the women buy the album. Yeah. But I don't really like, like women the and I don't like that Market narrative tour. that Tyler Perry preaches. He's a black man, you got to congratulate and appreciate everything he's done. But in Tyler Perry movies, if you watch most of the narratives, the wealthy black man is the villain. Ain't shit. Yeah, he's nasty. He ain't shit. He's nasty. So the broke black man is the savior. So it's dark skin, rich black man, abuser, then light skin, bum. blue collar. Yes. With yeah, a not, love bum, for, not bum, but love, blue with collar. With a love blue. for Jesus going to come and save yes, and restore indeed, you. Indeed. And see, the thing, thing is, all right, so what we don't have is the other side of the story. Sister Shahara Zali in 1989 wrote that book, The Black Man's Guide to Understanding a Black Woman. She took a lot of heat for that. And if you go back and look at some of the stuff on Donahue, uh, Geraldo, she was saying some of the same things that everybody else in this country has had their behaviors and everything examined, except in our community with our women. The black woman. Black women have been held uh, apart from the consequences uh, or accountability for their choices. You're free to make your choices. You can want what you want, but accept what comes along with it. Indeed. And this is why, you know, so many women are like, well, who are you to even say something? Now, wait a minute. You can talk about you don't want no scrub and this and that. Y'all can say some of the most egregious stuff, but if a man just happens to, to, to speak a truth, then all of a sudden, 
He needs to be canceled. He's Satan. He's, he's a menace. Gay. He's right. gay. He don't like, don't like women. He, yeah, I, have, yeah. I have a push. Yeah. I, I, I have a pushback for you. Okay. What do you say to the women that have no problem with you saying the things that you say, but that have an issue with you profiting from the things that you say? That's ridiculous. Yeah, that makes no sense. It doesn't? No, no. It, yeah, that did, makes no did, sense. Did, did, a lot of did women, these same women have a problem with Steve Harvey, the prophet? Yeah, so so again. When you cater to them, oh, no, do they have a problem so, with so, you so, monetizing again, it? Again, this is a unique issue for a black That's man. Cool. Gordon Ramsay can profit from calling you a stupid effing little monkey and have Hell's Kitchen. Simon Cowell can tell you, are you serious? And they love him. Yes. But if a black man... See, the rules for mm. black men are unique. Indeed. We're supposed to do everything and ask for nothing. Nothing. Yet, yet, um, uh, Olivia, who wrote uh, Scandal and all these different shows, mm -hmm. they can profit the showing some of the worst behaviors. Mm -hmm. But see, it's a black woman. Or you can get up and pander to black women and tell them, you know, see, nobody, everybody talks about, you've been divorced, y'all don't say that to Steve Harvey. I, that's what I just said. Say, a say, lot of them told me that you were divorced. I, 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 yeah, that's but not, who the hell is he to tell people where all his but failed but relationships? But see, hold on, but, but see, here's the thing. When we don't like what a black man says, then we try his past. Yep. Mm -hmm. See, nobody cares when you're saying what's, what's, mm -hmm. uh, when you tell them what they want to hear. And what does it have to do with anything? Two plus two is four. I use a lot of facts, data, statistics that anyone can go look up sure themselves. Does. And that's what bothers them because it's not an argument. It's like, well, we really do. What, what, you know what the real party is? They piss because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not kissing their ass and telling them what they want to hear. Indeed. See, if I was doing what everybody else did, oh, they'd make me a multimillionaire. Yeah. I don't need it. I'll well, no, no, no. Let me give you one more reason they piss too now. Hold <laughs> on. Let me give it to you. Your, your sweetie take. They was on your ass. Oh, which one? Which one? The one. Oh, the one he called, we yeah, called her, we called uh, her six. six. Called her six. He called her six. Ooh. Called her adjustable. They was I called, on I called her an adjustable sweetie. six. Oh, I missed the adjustable part. Adjustable six. Yeah. But what the his rank is that But no, no, no. Watch this. But he's the same guy that ranks Beyonce at an eight. Don't stop. Ish. I want to hear what he has to say <laughs> okay. about calling Sweetie a six. <laughs> an adjustable six, meaning she can go from cute to pretty. But see, when I judge women, I don't judge them. I judge women by the same... Metric. Um, this is where people get into the whole image consulting thing. I look at you, fresh face, no makeup, your natural state. And if you have ever seen her pictures, fresh face, natural state, she's a cute woman who can be pretty. But I don't think she's ever going to be considered to be beautiful or gorgeous. That does not mean she's bad, but there has to be a But what if she's already considered beautiful and gorgeous? But he's saying didn't. strip away all of the accessories and you get what you get. See, if you go, this is why when I use, when I talk about a scale, there's, first off, there are people who hate the whole notion. There's a scale or there's a Eurocentric standard of beauty. I'm like, look, Pam Greer. Go back to the 70s. Pam Greer is an eight. Yes. Jackie but she, Kennedy. But she looks good. But, but the thing is, back then you would have seen someone like Diane Carroll. She's up in that nine category, Dorothy Dandridge would have been up and around that 10 area. There's always going to be levels to this. But what women today are saying is they're all 10s. And, they're and they all don't great. believe that. They don't listen, believe that but this themselves. Is listen, man. It's PC. If I have a, if, if I, because everybody got a platform today, and if on my platform, I'm a woman, and I got 30 million people that if I say that wall is blue, they're going to say the wall is blue with me. Then what the fuck do it matter what else is happening in the real world, right? Because that's all these kids are doing on the internet. No, that's not true, though. Because then you get into a realism situation versus an idealistic situation. So idealistically, you can say every woman is a 10, every woman is beautiful. But do you really go that's home and do. believe Beauty's that? Because, no, blah, because blah, 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 if you blah, blah, believe blah. that, you wouldn't be buying a shitload of makeup every fucking day. You wouldn't be take an hour to get dressed before you leave the house making up your face if you thought you were a 10 already. Well, and, and, that goes to my, and that's the point I'm going to make. Because people say, well, you can't say this, that... Well, like, if, if that's the case, then walk out of the house. Exactly. You are. If you think in your heart of hearts yeah. that you're a 10, I like why women that wear are... makeup and dress fly, man. I don't know. If no, we're not talking about dressing. Okay, we're but, talking okay, about makeup. But hold on. But make, but guys, makeup has always existed. It has. Mm -hmm. Why did, why, when you go back in the 70s, did you see women with minimal makeup? They didn't even have veneers and this and that. That was just a natural state. Mm -hmm. 
There was a movie called I'm Gonna Get You Suck. Mm-hmm. I'm Gonna Get You Sucker. And uh, <laughs> what was that? Tracy, what was that one lady's name? Real Thin Woman. I know, Keen- I know the scene you're talking about. Yeah, too. Keenan Ivory Wayans takes her home from the club. And he's like, well, I got to tell you, I really don't have a 12-inch. He's like, that's okay. My eyes aren't yeah. really green. She starts taking yeah, her right. contact off. And it was a joke because she takes her contacts off, her hair, her wig, wig off. She takes everything. off a, a fake buck and everything else. That was a joke in the 90s. Ha, ha, ha. No, it ain't a joke. That's what it is today. That's what it is. You walk around Atlanta today, and there are men dressed like women who look like women. Because of the excessive makeup, the colored hair, and all the long fingernails, you're like... Okay, this excessive adornment is for who? It ain't for you, 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 or me. It's yeah. for them. It's for them. We don't like that. It's Men have been them. asking for women to have your natural look, your natural hair, your natural shape, your natural beauty for the longest. But they'll tell you we do it because you like white women or this or that. Men aren't asking for this stuff. Men are, men are not asking people who make middle income to spend $700 on a lace front wig. But in, in, or in women, buy $2,000 oh, 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 shoes. But, but, but hold on, hold on one do, second. But and, if oh, you do it, baby. Right, I was going to in, 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 in their defense, it. though, because I talk to a lot of women and, and uh, they'll say, yeah, you claim y'all like natural this, that, and the third, but no, I like it. You, what pictures you liking on Instagram? I like it all. I like it all. Like so it watch this. So I can, I can, I can. I'm just saying, this is their point. Watch this. Out of all of the women that we know, right? And be honest here. How many of them are getting a ring? You got all these accessories. You got oh. this fat ass. You got all this makeup. Da, 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 da. Is it really working? Not my place to say. Well, what if that's not the not my place to and say. I'm not, No, I, from your own observation. Oh, I, I haven't been running around looking for that. No, but you know people that get married. I don't know a whole lot of You get what I'm saying? I'm going to go back to what you said because this happens all the time. Women will say, yeah, you say you don't want one thing, but what are you liking on this? I am so damn tired of women telling men what we think and what we want. Instead we say listening. what we want, and you you know and why this is? Because 80% it. of us was raised by women, and we are so used to women leading us, they think they own us. He's yeah. Right. He's right. And they don't. That's true. We're the only group of men that demure to our women. Go to over to go over to Chinatown and see if this shit happens. Go over to the Middle East. Go ask, go ask Mohammed or, An, or, or Ahmed what they they don't put up with this mess. We put up with it because we have such an ir, irrational, dysfunctional reverence for women in our culture because we have a matriarchy to where we they try to make us question our own minds. It's our fault though. Would you agree with that? Ultimately, uh, the will, black man I will is say, leaving the I will household. say that there is. I want to be careful when I say with that because that's going to get misused. There are some structural things that happen that, okay, in, 19, in the 60s, when the, when the Great Society came in, uh, and Lyndon Johnson put in the Great Society, they did, not, they did not expect to happen what happened. Go read the Monaghan Report and Monaghan Scissors. They did not expect to give government assistance to food stamps to the black community and for women to choose the so the check over the men. Over the men. They were actually confused as to why this happened. It was like, wait a minute. We thought we would give this to you for a little bit. And then once you kind of got stable, it was or, a temporary or, situation. then you get back. With, but no, no, no. They took the benefit. So is it the man's fault um, that you were locked out of unions, unable to get equal jobs and things like that? No, it's not their fault. It's your ultimate responsibility that you were not able to provide for a family you have. Yet, you can go look at it yourself. Prior to 1960, 65, we were married at a rate of 80%. Broke, Jim Crow, segregated, lynched, everything else. But we had us a community. We had HBCUs. We had churches. We stuck together. We had black business. We had black buses, this, that, that. But as soon as it came in, when the women were given a choice, far more chose this over the men. And that's what that's the that's the original quote unquote sin that we have yet to deal with in the black community that makes black men feel some kind of way. And black women don't like to acknowledge the fact of that. I have a question for you. I have two other things. Okay, but. Are you taking that statistic of the rate at which black women are marrying? Right. Mm -hmm. And saying they're unable to marry versus the modern woman today maybe just not viewing marriage the way she was brought up to view it. 
one out of four, twenty six percent of black women were married. The next lowest rate is fifty four percent were white women. Still double, double, still okay. double. And if that was your mantra that marriage is not as important. You wouldn't put the stipulation that I can only submit to a man that makes a certain dollar amount. So you're open to marriage when a man makes a certain dollar amount. But if he falls below beneath that threshold, you're closed off to marriage. But that's but that's so? only, but that's only in the, in the black community. That's us. It's, it's only for that's black us. men. That's us. Because not only so that's that go ahead, let's go ahead and go all the way in since we're going there. Mm-hmm. That's us. The stipulation is a black man has to be a superhero. Yep. You got to be able to provide four or five times the rate of yep. what any other man yep. would provide, and you got to be a sexual professional. So if you don't have all those things, you're not high value. You're yeah. not quality. And that's what my show is kind of shown. It's, it's let women say what's on their mind. Mm-hmm. He does. He asks that's a series of questions. Let you say what's mm-hmm. on your and mind. And they answer them. And then based on your answers, he assesses the data that you've given him via his questions. I don't know why they fall for some of them questions. Because they're speaking. If you've ever, because they if don't you've see ever, it. If you've ever seen them. No, no, no. <laughs> but, that, uh, but again, before they get tripped up, they think they're, they hold some, I'm going to get them. I'm going to teach him. Ma'am, yeah, blah blah blah. Ma'am, he and yeah. ma'am, he don't and and to all the people that says he's harsh and brash, I've seen enough of him where he starts off the interview mild mannered, respectful. I reflect what I get. Ma'am, back. exact. Ma'am, 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 ma'am. Please stop cutting me off. Ma'am, you call my platform to get advice. Let me advise you. A lot of the things. And when he says anybody something that they 40? don't want to hear, anybody in over forty? Yes, me. Okay. Um, ah, you like that? I'm still go sad. back. <laughs> Go back to when you were 10 years old. I want you to think, imagine a 20-year-old woman speaking to a 50-year-old man. You wouldn't hear the tone, the, the, the way That's in true. which I see many 20-year-old women That's approach true. a man that... People, period. That's no, true. No, in particular, call, calling in my show, talking to me like I'm your age. I'm like, well... So there is no... With some... With far too many women, there is no level of credibility a man has where he can't be checked. See, one of the things is what you tend to hear more often than anything else is, why'd you go on his show, girl? If that was me, I'd have cussed him out. See, there's a problem. Women are, we're allowed, we've allowed one-way violence in our community for far too long. Ooh. One-way aggression. See, all of these men in this room know that there are lines that we can't cross because Fuck this podcast. We're going to have to go handle business outside. Yeah. Because there's a low level threat of violence Indeed. between our men. Women don't have that. So they can say whatever, do whatever, be as foul as they want to. Because it's like, so let me get this right. You would have went into that man's place of business and cussed him out as if you could do something. And if they he decided, can, you know, with no recourse. Because they assume, because if you touch me, then I'm going to call somebody. Which is who? The police. Which is a, a man. man, yeah, a, a man, and it's typically is typically not, and it's typically you're not expecting. When you think about who's going to show up, you're not expecting a, a woman to show up. You expect a man to show up, and let's be honest, most are expecting a white man to show up. And I'm like, you've got to think of the the level of disrespect. All men are asking is for women to be nice and cooperative. That is it. They're not asking for you to be supermodels. IG models, they're just asking, can you just be nice, cooperative, fit, and childless? Is that much to ask for? But that's a huge lift today. Kev, you can't throw the childless. Yeah, you can. No, I'm joking. I'm joking, but you, once you reach a certain age. No, nah, nah, I can throw it in there. I'm going to throw it, I'm gonna tell you why I'm throwing it in there. I'm not going to back off that because, look, there are too many forms. Of, I'm 52 years old. When mm. I used to go into the grocery store to ask for condoms, they clowned you. We need a price check on condoms because yeah. especially where I'm from, they thought they could morally justify it. But now we have women have access to over 33 forms of birth control before and or after. You, there are all kind of the the adoption, all these things. No child gets born today that a woman did not want to carry. I mean, to carry the full term. That's her choice. I would agree. Yeah, so if you choose to have a child. Without the benefit of marriage, fine. But you accept everything that comes along with it. Because we, because there's enough information out there to show that statistically, a child is not going to be in the best position to have a best outcome this way. Can it happen? Sure. Because 
flip the script. If men were to go out here and just make babies reckless, they call you. Uh, they call you something. There's a names whole bunch. for them. Yeah. yeah. A whole so bunch. Yeah. that is this this conversation right here, Kev, is where is where I was really and really on the hook with just wanting to hear more that you had to say. I was watching you with a young woman and the conversation somehow was just based on, hey, whatever you did, was it best for the child? She was saying she moved. She moved to wherever mm-hmm. her family was mm-hmm. and it was her family that gave her the advice and I didn't even really want to move, but mm-hmm. she was doing all of that and you just kept it on, yeah, I hear you, but was that best for the child? And I don't even really think she still was getting nothing you were saying. And for me, I was like, oh, see, this is this is deep. This is deep. That was mm-hmm. deep for me because mm-hmm. that's been some of my experience in trying to explain or have the conversation like, hey, I know you're looking out for you, but at what point is it okay for me to say it's not about you but and I not think, come off like a dick? I think that we, especially in our community, have normalized the absentee father. Right. And so when women are making these decisions, and these choices, the father's wants don't even really come into the decision making. Well, yeah. Right. It's further than that. Yeah. It's per- I mean, we've normalized prosperity and the prosper like coming from the Christian church when the prosperity gospel came started coming in. I don't want to get too religious in this, but we've we've normalized that you deserve to live your best life. Your happiness as an individual is paramount. And when you tell people that that, then that means I'm up here and everything else is a secondary concern. So when I turn around and say marriage ain't about love or romance, it's about duty. What? We're the most Christian folks to when it comes to the when it comes to the most Christian mm-hmm. of unions, we also want to get new wave. Mm-hmm. Because somebody mentioned the granddad may have had a family on the other side of town. Yeah, but you didn't you didn't hear about it till the funeral. Sure right. didn't. Because sure grandma did. had a duty to keep her mouth closed <laughs> and right. granddad You're had right. a duty to keep it held. The stuff you hear about your grandparents and great grandparents is after they left. You still hold them in high regard. You do. That is Are true. we as serious of a people as they were? Hell no. 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 Because we're a bunch of in our feelings, child. I want to be Selfish. happy all the time. Selfish. Selfish. Mm-hmm. Me, 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 me. Nope. That's true. And what do we got? A, 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 a fracture. Everybody's doing their own thing. Can't nobody say nothing. You, As a man... As a grown man, you can look at somebody's kid that you know is doing something wrong. You can't say nothing for fear of what their mama going to say or this or that. Ah, The community is gone. That's true. So So, we all hear our parents say, yo, when I did something out in the street, Mr. Mr. Johnson will whoop my ass. And, and take me home. home. And then, get my, and then my parents will whip so, my ass too. Yeah. I asked I asked this question to women all the time. All right. Who leads? Who leads? Because if you want the bun- the fundamental building block of any government, I mean sorry, any country, any state, any community, any society is the family. Is the family. And the and when it gets right down to it, that's a mother and a father. We are different. If you have children, you can sit back and know that you and your, and your the mother of your child have thought different things about that child, but whose word follows? And far too often today, women are leading. Because, so it's like, well, if I asked you, how do I get to uh, how do I get to Bergdorf Goodman? Everybody in here would tell me a different locate, a different route. Mm-hmm. We'd all end up at the same destination. Women are far too worried about their destination being right instead of the, I mean, their route being right instead of the outcome. Mm -hmm. A man's nature is to discipline, correct, structure. A woman's nature is to offer nurture or feelings. So you guess what we get? We've gotten a generation of softer men and a generation of harder women. They've told their daughters, don't worry about no man, don't worry about this, get your education, and so forth. And they've told their sons, Quite the opposite. And then the funny thing is you end up raising the very men that you decry of not being able to lead. So when I say who leads, forget every one of the men in this room. Where's the camera? Fuck us. Forget forget us all. What about your boys? What about your sons? What about your boys? Black boys are reading at a fourth grade level. The next group of leaders are coming from your sons. What are you doing with them? And if you're not, if you have the money to put one of your children to college, 
Is it going to be your son? Are you actually making a differentiation for your son versus your daughters? Because you want your daughters to have somebody that can lead, but you're not teaching any kind of leadership in your home. Yes, sir. Uh, they get mad when I start talking no, about no. this because I'm like, okay, you say at in your 30s, all of a sudden you're going to just flip this flip the script and all of a sudden become this cooperative, submissive woman. What history do you have with even cooperating with a man? And I ask a question. Did you, did you have any brothers growing up? Yeah. Did your mother serve your father? Yeah. Did you serve your brothers? What? <laughs> but you go into a Hispanic family and the- I was just about go to Go into a Hispanic family and the girls of the family serve the boys. Now, why is it that a guy who may have come into this country legally or illegally, especially if you're in the South, I make this thing all the time. A guy can come in this country illegally, stand outside a Home Depot or the Day Labor Center and do almost anything, sell oranges, whatever you think, but go home and get a submissive, respectful, loyal woman. He ain't got to be a millionaire, but he can get that. But yet, I got to go to Harvard. Mm -hmm. mm. I, 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 Joe's with me often. So I had this conversation with one of our female friends. And she said, demographically, the black woman and the Asian man are the two like falling yeah, I've heard that. groups, right? Mm -hmm. And I said, why? And she said, because the black man has no problem dating outside of his race. <laughs> and the Asian woman has no problem dating outside of her race. And I told her, this girl, she makes a nice amount of money. And I said, yo, because you guys snicker and laugh at the seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year man. And hmm. Maria and Becky will welcome him with open arms. Well, let me tell you, your friend, you're full of shit. <laughs> mm. Ma'am, you are full of shit. Black men, men traditionally are the more racial loyal of any group. That's it. Women are the ones that tend to, because you want to know who dates out the most? Asian women, white men. So the net, net of it is, if black women were as sexually, as desired, sexually as black men, do you not think they would date out as often as we would? Ooh. But the thing is, the black men we start talking about, they are still saying, I want a woman. With all these situations, modern woman, this or that, still, when we marry, we are marrying a black woman at an 86% rate. But see, they want to talk about the 14% that don't yeah, do it. Yeah, I and, don't like that. I don't and, like that. And, and like if that. you even take it even further, it's really exacerbated when you start getting into things outside of what I consider corporate America. When you start getting into entertainment, athletics, uh, entertainment, athletics, uh, entertainment mm -hmm. and athletics, the numbers mm -hmm. are overrepresented. Gotcha. But if you look in where people are making, you know, having to go to work a traditional nine to five day, most people marry people that look like themselves. You see, that's a deflection argument. It is, it is. Because it's at the end of the day, all you got, it's like, okay, ma'am, let's accept it. All you got to do is find one. Why can't you find one? And you ask your friend, uh, have you ever been with a man that's suitable or reasonable? And here's where it's going to come. Yeah, back in college, I was engaged once. Well, why didn't that happen? Who broke it off? And I'm going to tell you, almost 100% of the time, they're the ones leaving. You honestly think that these women honestly think that they can leave a man in their 20s and 30s, play the field, do what they want to, and in, in their early 20s, and then wait later on in life and get a man that's more valuable as their value is going down. That's what's been marketed to them. But their value, I think you're right. I'm agreeing with you. They think, though, that their value is rising yep. because they are making more money. So the things that they value in a man, they think we value in them. And that's one of your biggest arguments. Mm -hmm. Man, so your money matters not to a man that has his own money. Before well, you before you have this exchange, really, really quickly, ask someone who's been married twice, do you want to get married again? I would. I would. I would, I would get married again because uh, if I decide I want more kids, which that would be one situation. Or number two, I, I you're going to have somebody at the end of the life. Word. But the thing is, every woman I deal with, they watch my program. <laughs> they hear exactly what I say. They hear what you and stand they know for. Exactly and they know exactly what I stand exactly. for. And I would tell you this. I don't budge because I've done it twice and I realized that I shouldn't have. I don't fault my former relationships for, for not working because I grew up the same way we all grew up. We never. I didn't grow up in the position of thinking that you need to be responsible for everything. You need to have a plan and an outcome. You need to have a place for a woman to nest and not put pressure on them. Pressure's made for shoulders, not for hips. See, in the black community, we saw so many women doing stuff that I think many men put 
undue pressure on a woman that's not really built for the female. So you never hear me talk anything uh, negative about my exes. I take 100% responsibility, for, even for the stuff that I could arguably say fell short on their side, not mm -hmm. their responsibility. Um, sexual marketplace value is one of the things that tends to upset women more than anything else. So I ask the question, <laughs> what product on the market increases with time, with, with age and use? You put me in a real tough spot when I have to keep a straight face. When, well, when, when you, you say, say sexual, sexual we, we marketplace We quote it. We quote it. Sexual marketplace tell you something, buddy. value. I won't say it anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> but I perfectly is, understand. No, we all understand it, but, but they the don't. Is, and so but, that's why, yeah. Women, women have been told that college, money, socioeconomic status, experience increases your value. Doesn't. No, it doesn't. It decreases your it, it increases your asking price because of a thing called hypergamy. Women typically want men to have at least what they have or more. So yeah. I'm not if you wait until you ha are making a certain amount of money, it's going to be harder for you to accept the man working less. If a man if you want if you get a certain level of education, this or that, you're going to think that it raises your overall value. Mm -hmm. So when you hear me ask all women, how tall are you? And how much do you weigh? Dress size. Dress size. How much do you weigh? If you had to rake yourself, I'm like, that's your S and B. That's what it kind of starts. Then it, it gets to be a, a question. It gets to be a problem because when women rank themselves around the average range, I'm like, in what world did average women get above average men? Consistently. They want to fight you at that point. Today's world, though. That's not true. Well, okay, Shit. okay. That's not true. Now, hold on, hold on. Now, there's a caveat. If you are an average woman, you get an above. If you have an above average man later in life, he doesn't start that way. You get him with with he's young. See, this whole high value thing has two components. Many women want a man who's already high Stavage. value, or you don't want to build a bob or build a boot. Yeah, no way. All right, well, great. Then you go ahead and hook up with him. When he's uh, getting it out of the mud, when he's living in a one-bedroom studio, and y'all get the, I call it an, an Ikea marriage. Y'all get that Ikea marriage. <laughs> you know? Guy, and, this guy, what is wrong with, with the this one guy, line, man? With, yeah, the one, what with the one man. line. Is, yeah, yeah, we, we all know what Ikea is. Yeah, because you know, it look real yeah, nice yeah. with his particle board yeah, and shit. Go and get the Ikea marriage, and y'all do that, and y'all y'all split the, you know, we'll get one venti mochaccino frappuccino lot, and y'all split that shit, and y'all act like y'all doing something. One scone and everything else. And then you build and build and build, and then once he gets to his place, they don't you, want that, though. Well, I don't yeah, care what don't, you want. Don't I don't want, care what don't you. I don't think. I don't care what you want. I care what you can get. I agree. And see, the thing is, if men don't run around talking about, I feel, I feel, I feel, and I want. Men think, do, and we accept our situation. We all want a certain caliber of woman, but until you were in the position to be able to have and maintain that, could you get it? Uh, could you get it and keep it? Yeah. See, Why is that hard to say for men? That listen, realization buddy. we've come to a long time ago. I'm not going to shoot for Halle Berry if I know I'm not on Halle Berry. Well, level. hold on. So or do say, I feel entitled? Let to me do say. So. But see, the thing is, <laughs> I'm going to say this story. But here's the thing: is even if you did, <laughs> let's just say I, I ran. In, let's just say you ran to Halle Berry in New York City, and y'all did do something. You Halle Berry wouldn't all of a sudden be a new level. You'd say. <laughs> I caught her one day. Yeah, I caught her one day on a nice little drunk good day. buzzy night. That's yeah. a that's a story you always got to that's tell. True. But all of a sudden, you wouldn't that's walk true. around thinking, "Well, hey, Hallie, hey, next time you're in town, let's what?" <laughs> no, nah, man, that was tequila. I ain't got nothing to do with that. Or, but now, or, wait, 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 buddy. Or, now, Halle Berry's not your standard. I got you. But I don't want Sally Richardson next and Nia Long next and J Lo next, and I make forty listen, grand. But, all that shit is awesome, but my point was in today's world, so that example has to continue. Okay, I slept with Holly. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. okay. and I leave thinking the same way you said. Oh man, what a night, man. Who knew? Mm -hmm. Blah blah blah. But two weeks later. Another one of them pop up, and it happened again. I didn't expect that one. I didn't plan for that one either. You gotta oh, have a, shit. You got to have a high S. Hey, that's pretty cool that that happened twice. I'm yeah. going to go ahead on about my way. Hey, five hours later, here go another one. Wait a second. Indeed. And now the, now the game has changed. No, but, right? but for Now those, it's not an anomaly. But he answers to them as well. Your SMV is then high. Well, see, for men... Do you want me to tell you about... 
Oh, you got it. You don't really see. Look, see, their SMV see, is high at that point. See, that's not happening to average five four, one hundred and seventy pound women. That's happening to women that are bumping yes. into high value men. I think it is, but that's the minority, so I'm not going to argue. It's it. a minority. Hold on, hold it, on. Here's here's what's okay. And it's so sexual. Co- so so a couple of things. One, men know what your credit rating is and what your resources like. That's what kind of woman you can afford. That's generally what we know. We we know what our resource pool is and the kind of woman we can afford. Sure, if we got a Halle Berry or if we got some one-offs, mm-hmm. that does not give you an 800 credit score and a $400,000 income. That just gives you the ability to get it off the lip, some game. Maybe you're looking right. Maybe you're smelling right. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe your particular brand of dude is in style right now, and mm-hmm. that's what it is. Mm-hmm. But men are at least realistic about that. Here's what happens, though, with, uh, with women. Because so many women want these men who are, quote, unquote, high value, and, I, I, and I've defined that. You got 100% of women, the Petra principle, going for the top 20%, top 10% of men, and guys... Up here, you will know that if he can hit Halle Berry, he'll hit it. But if he can hit that six and ain't nobody looking, he going to hit that too. Yeah. The problem is the way women look at that is women look at that man as their new standard. They're like, well, if I can get him and he's with her, that puts me on her level. And that's not how it works. We look at these things differently. So it's not as though average women have not dealt with high value men because I, I count for that on my show. Mm-hmm. Many times women say, I deal with high value men. I deal with high value men. I say, I don't worry about dealing. Marriage. Did they commit? We keep, we keep, we, mm-hmm. we Did keep, they commit? We, we judge by weddings and see that tells the story. Women are judged ultimately by the kind and caliber of men that they can keep. Keep. And many of these women cannot keep a man like That's that. That's true. Uh, which is, and which bothers them because it's like, well, if I can deal with him, well, if you can't keep him, what does it matter? What bothers a lot of women about my show is that it's it's really common sense and basic. It's just telling it's telling them something that men know. You can't have it all. Life is about choices and trade offs, and they don't want to compromise. And they you call, went all. They, no, they want to com- see you shit on some more men. Too. No, they call compromise they, settling. They wanted to bring they some more men on there. Like, well, I got like, three, that's what they I call got, it. I got three years of that. I got and see what they don't do is go back into my catalog because even on like on World Star, they put up some of my older videos. It's all out there. It is. And then and even when I do say stuff to men or non-black women, I don't get credit for that. I don't get credit for that. I mean, I had a woman call on the show the other day, and she called herself. She wanted to start checking a black woman. I'm like, oh well, hell no, I don't. We don't. You don't. You don't get those kind of privileges over here. Mm-hmm. But it's like, but that's not gonna get the clicks though. Well, well, so what is it? What is it they really want? They don't want me to say it. To be honest, because what? Because yeah. what's starting to happen is I'm not. I'm not rude. I'm not. I'm not cursing you out. Uh, I'm not being, uh, I'm not initiating drama. I'm not trolling. Women are calling into my show voluntarily and we're having conversations in real time. And what it's starting to do is it's starting to make it harder to refute what I'm saying. The stuff I quote, you can look up the numbers. Um, and it's not like I'm just, you know, calling you a bunch of bitches and O's and this and that. Da, 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 da. That's the problem. It's so, so and, and it's starting to have an impact. And I, you know, mm-hmm. Women are starting to look at things differently. Guys are starting to look at things differently. And the people who really have the issue are, do they have a desire to change or improve anywhere? Or do they think they're right? That's killer. Do you really have the ability to look yourself in the mirror and say, hey, I need to change a few things? Or Don't give is, me the answer. No, I'm just saying. Or is this guy I, I know, crazy? I heard what he he said, hates man. women. I left it there for a reason. Who the hell is he? <laughs> he's that. failed in his relationships. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. Those are all things that are, allow you to dismiss yeah. everything, all the factual information that's been shared. It allows you to be dismissive. Either that or the defensive thing. You immediately go into defense mode when somebody says something that you don't agree with. Sign language. I got to go up against two Kevin Samuels. This ain't even fair. So it's like, <laughs> this ain't even so fair. I have, I have something, call, I, I have something called... <laughs> we knew that. Oh, I have man. something called sign language. Shame, insults, guilt, and the need to be right. Uh, and typically, when I'm starting to get real pushback, especially from a woman, shame. Uh, your mama black. Yep. 
Like, how can you say this gives a black woman? You owe black women. I've heard black women actually say, I owe black women because I talk to black women. I'm like, do you owe black men? And like, we, the, 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 the O only goes to us, to you. A black woman raised you and this and that. I'm like, well, wait a minute. Then if the shame don't work, the insults, you gay, you gay, you gay, you gay. I'm like, you're a grown damn woman. Are we on the playground? I'm not gay. You know, part of me being gay, ask a girlfriend if I'm gay. But it's like, you, it's the same thing. Gay, gay, gay. Because that's the first thing, that's one of the first insults you want to do. You know, it's like, you know, DMX just passed. And now people are wanting to cancel him because of lyrics he made back in the late 90s. I won't let him. But the thing is, but, but because we throw that word around too much in the black community. I'm like, now, wait a minute. Black women have calling the man gay, but then you, your, your makeup artist, your hairstylist, and some of your best friends are gay men. What are you talking about? And you love them. Right, yeah. right, because they... Because they pandering to you. And then the guilt, you know, you're embarrassing us, you know, you're making and us I'm look bad. I'm not going to say that that's why they love them. But, but there's, there's <laughs> many things, get- but the ultimate one is the need to be right. Mm-hmm. The need to be right. That's why it goes on and on for it. It's like two plus two is four. Yeah, but I know a friend, I know this, I know that. And it's like, all right. Are you move, are you trying to move this thing forward? Are you trying to get a better outcome? Or do you want things to just be where they are? And that's the thing. I don't begrudge what women want, what men want, anybody wants. I just ask, can you get it? Can you get it? What's the likelihood of getting it? And if you can't get it, are you willing to make the changes and adjustments that are, are going to be needed to get that kind of outcome? And more often than not, you know, women are saying they don't want... More often than not, women have never asked themselves that question. They just assumed it was going to happen. It's like um, this whole notion of getting married um, earlier. And you ask a lot of, especially women in our community, they don't think they should be even considering marriage until 30. Mm-hmm. 30. I'm like, well, just run the numbers on that. 30. You meet them at 30. Six months to a year, you're engaged. You want to have a year of marriage. I'm like, the numbers don't make sense. Uh, six months to it a year is make. not even engagement yeah. time. Yeah. No, yeah. It's no, more no. like three, four years you're dating uh-huh. before you yeah. get and the, the, thing the, is, pop the question. The numbers, and the thing is, the numbers don't make sense. And let's go all the way back around because they... There is a financial incentive to keep men and women separate because there's a rent for this apartment, a rent for that apartment, mm-hmm. power in this, power for that. Mm-hmm. There's more money when people are single. When you're married, you have to actually, you know, consolidate, consolidate households. There's somebody else who you need to kind of work with, and your priorities change. Instead of we're gonna go to Cancun, we're gonna go to this, we're gonna do that. It's a different, it's a different environment. So. Um, That's interesting. I never thought about that. Well, I mean, and this was kind of all laid out in the whole book subverted and the the lies that were told to middle class women. I was like, here's the thing. Take it away from relationships, okay? You don't go sell a piano to somebody in the middle class. You don't do that. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You're you're you dr- you work at the MTA. You work at the post office. You're middle class people. You don't sell. A piano that makes no sense. What you sell is a music room. Anybody who's anybody has a music room. Only the culture sophisticated people have music rooms. You want to have music in your house because it increases your kids, you know, cognitive mm. ability and, and this and that and da 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 da. This like and of course in a music room you need to have encyclopedias because it has it. And then if, then people have a music room. What are they gonna need? They're gonna need a piano. Jeez. You don't sell, and this and this there was a there was a method there was a there was a method, especially in the black community. Our dollars circulate six hours. Mm-hmm. You know why it circulates six hours? Because we're hyper consumers. Mm-hmm. Even in the pandemic, the uh, line around the Gucci we store. Was the niggas. <laughs> we're hyper, we, we are, the, we, we are the, hyper consumers. So even the line around the Gucci store uh, is line, and, and and you're not the typical Gucci customer. But why? Because it's. We have a household that's feelings. It's not rooted in, rooted in logic logic or outcomes of saying, all right, you may want a Gucci belt, son, but you're going to need to go work and make that Gucci money. Now, I'm going to pay you to do this, this, this. And they're like, wait a minute. I got to work how many hours to get the money for one belt? I'm good. Versus money just comes from a stimulus check or something, and it, it, it just comes, so we just spend it. And... 
when I was growing up, everybody didn't expect to have big homes and drive Mercedes. People were happy with Honda Civics and reasonable homes. Men not being around, we're not we're the more logical long term because we know ain't nobody coming to save us. So we gotta have something. And this is why I don't begrudge women for moving the way they do. I just think men need to understand women's nature and understand you're not gonna you're not gonna change this by argument. I've started out before high value or anything else. I started out with talking about show your work. You can start, say whatever you want to, but when you actually start making the changes in yourself, showing the accomplishments, mm-hmm. you can go back on my YouTube channel and see the progression, the evolution. I did. Congratulations, by thank, the way. Thank you. Yeah. So, and so it's hard to argue against work, work, work. People are like, you always working, man. You're always working. You're always doing this. I'm like, I'm older than you and I'm out working you. Mm. And our women are no different than any other group of women in the sense that this, they want to believe in their men. They're just afraid to. So this is where I hold men, black I men, responsible. I would agree yeah. with that. Yeah. I would Since D.W. Griffith's Birth of a Nation in 1915, the black male image has been under assault. There is one thing that does not exist, and it needs to exist. Black male media by black men for black men. Shout out to O'Shea Duke Jackson. He runs a, way, uh, uh, um, a website called The Negro Manosphere. And over there is there's a collective of black men who are, are, are always talking about you know, things that are important to us. We need black male media run by us, not us at CBS, NBC, NBC. We need our stuff for our voice, our point of view, funded by us, our money. So when people say, you know, you're making money off black women, I make men support my show. Mm -hmm. Men support my show. Men. The overwhelming support of my show comes by men. Because I was saying thank you for sticking up. Even if you're a white collar, high value, so and so, whatever, brother, you call yourself on your way to, because you stick up for the men who are blue collar, the factory worker, the military guy. You say something and you don't look down on us. I'm like, I come from that. What are you talking about? I still am that shit. As do far you as still work in the corporate world? Pardon the interruption. Um, no, I I do this. Okay, cool. And, and, that I, was, and, but, and that was my next question. I'm glad you asked. I was, wonder, I was wondering if. The, your stance on the male female dynamic would have any impact on you being able to hold kind of corporate gigs if you were still into that. But if you're not doing well, that, then I yeah, guess the question's it, mute. Yeah, it, of course, I couldn't do it. I could be canceled because all they would have to do right. is call my job and he would say, Would yeah. you? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, check yeah, out this yeah. But the funny thing is, anybody who knows me would tell you I've been this way since the 80s. <laughs> me too. They'll tell you. I mean, which, are you which are you having more fun in? Corporate? Corporate shit that the shit you was on, I don't know, I don't come from that. Or mm. this content creation shit. Um this by far, because I can control it. Um, you know, having when I worked in corporate America, I was in sales and everybody ate off what I did. So if I go close the deal, my manager ate, the sales reps ate, the engineers and everybody else ate. Now if you build your own business, your own audience, you can start to employ and have people eat like have people eat off you the way you want to. When I was in corporate America, I had my first management job here in New York City. Hand to God. I was number two rep in the country, and I came up to take over the second worst team in the nation. I hired a, a team of people. First person I hired was a black woman. The next six people I hired were black men and then one white guy. Uh... Oh, actually, yeah, one white guy. He was mother was white. His mother was black. I'm not black guy. Uh, white. Um, and it's funny. Now, everybody in the organization knew my pedigree, knew I closed some of the biggest deals in company history, knew the CEO and blah, blah, blah. I was the golden boy, per se. Mm-hmm. I came up here in New York, and we were at Smith & Walensky, and I remember the uncomfortable way they was about to ask this question. I just knew they were going to ask. They are like, hey, Kevin. Uh-huh. <laughs> I just got a question for you. Um, notice you hired all African Americans. Wow. Why is that? I'm like, probably the same reason you hired all white people. I went back to eat my steak and they couldn't say a damn thing. Cause I could kick I was kicking their ass. I beat them at every turn. I beat them in the company. And I took my team and I said, All right. I've become successful. I'm going to make sure you have the t- tools and resources, but you're going to work harder than you ever have worked before because, damn it, that's what's expected. But if you do these things, and we actually got out there and got it done, professional, 
and performed blew them away. So I'm, and I asked, and I went to my regional vice president. I was like, I think it's interesting. That I got, I was asked why I hired all black people, but you know, I I put it back to a story I told in college when I had a South African. This was right after apartheid. I had a South African chemistry instructor, and he said, Kevin, in chemistry recitation, 400 plus people, he's like, why do all the, the black students tend to sit together? They all tend to sit right there. I've noticed every time they all tend to sit together, I was like, I was like, the same reason all the white students sit together. But I think it's funny that your eye automatically goes to that little group of five or seven black people instead of this hundreds of white folks. And he just sat there, looked dumbfounded. I was like, um, why is this important? Because when I was in management, I didn't walk around talking about my views on this or that. I just had a shot and I hired the best people I could find for the job. Mm -hmm. And they just happened to be black. Can't we do that? Just like if you, the whole notion Mm -hmm. of why is this view or things that I'm saying, they're not wrong. And if we operated more in a way to where men were leading, effective, productive, competitive, successful men, men that respected one another, we got out here and other groups of men had to say, those guys are somebody to be contended with. You're not going to go drop a business in that neighborhood. No, no, we're going to drop the business in the neighborhood. We're going to have the bank in our neighborhood. We're going to have the dry cleaner. We're going to have everything in here. And if you want to come over here, profit from what we're profiting from, you got to go through our power structure. We're going to talk about circulating our dollar and that kind of thing. Then it will be a hell of a lot easier for women to sit back and say, I don't like what the hell they're saying. Even how you say it. That's true. But this air conditioning shit shall feel good. <laughs> That's true. Uh, That's I, true. Like, I, like, I like the streets are clean and it's safe. And my yeah. kid, you know what? And we're the only people that don't have it. But coming from corporate, are you, are you shocked at just how fast this content creation game moves and the success and the, and like we were talking off mic and you were saying you were out eating and people are recognize you, recognizing you and I mean coming from a different world I understand how it could be a lot for somebody well I come from the sales side and then the advertising and marketing side I understood the importance of image and how image really plays um, so am I shocked? no because I studied it a lot before I even got into it um, like most, like many people on YouTube, you know, I came here understanding the platform, the algorithm, the, how Google, why Google bought YouTube and why Facebook bought Instagram and all those different things going behind it. Ultimately, I hope to become platform agnostic. I just want to own my own content and whatever platform is hot, just drop it there. Like this is why podcasting and all this is so valuable mm-hmm. because if they decide they want to turn the lights off one day, you just go to the next platform. Keeping the platforms competing is like keeping the labels competing. Ownership. And see, I think, you know, while a lot of a lot of men champion stuff that I'm saying, I'm like, understand something. Uh, go back to my old content. I want to hear shit from you talking about you being broke. If you're not working 60 hours minimum a week that, that you're getting paid for, Turn off YouTube, Instagram, whatever, and get your ass out there. Go mm-hmm. down there and work at McDonald's, Circle K, get you a job. I don't care about your pride. You can't be proud and broke at the same time. Mm-hmm. Go That's work, work and work and work, and then you take that money you make from your part-time job, invest some of it, invest most, and take half of it, invest it to your future. The other 50%, uh, the other percentage, take some, have some fun, go buy your belt, then invest it in self-improve it. Get you a high income skill. Get you something that's going to give you high value skills that you can market on, that you can leverage on the marketplace. Whether you're working in corporate America or whether you're going to be doing your own entrepreneurial thing in the future. But men, if you're working, the harder you work, the luckier you get, the more exposure you get. And it's about hard work and speed. Get out. When I came to New York City, it was one of the best moves I ever made because this city moves fast. Super fast. And that's good because you, you, if, you, if you can run fast, great. But if there's something wrong in your stride, you'll fall fast too. Good. Mm-hmm. Fix, what's, fix what's wrong and run quicker. Mm-hmm. Because if men are working to become the best version of themselves, putting the work in, a self-improvement, this, that, working with other men to help increase the opportunities for men. Guess what? 
women come along. Guaranteed, if coronavirus is over next month and the happening spot was, I don't know, something in Central Park and everyone in the country recognized that this group of guys get, got their shit together. We all go sit there. We could just be sitting at the table, smoking cigars, drinking scotch or bourbon, and just talking, chopping it up. We would have women surrounded us. Indeed. Because yeah. they they're always going to come where men are doing something. True. Where men are, when there's a, not, not shooting the shit, but when men are doing, getting together, especially talking about power. I think we've lost that power. Well, I think we've lost what, that what power. What power do you think we lost? What he just said. I think that it's literally been a total shift. Oh, today. Sh- T- yeah, it's oh, been a total yeah. shift in which the power that yeah, you're saying you. that, that that the women would flock to, it's been just the opposite. So we have the Instagram generation with the naked women and the sexually mm-hmm. um, Liberated, motivating, you know, I mean, sexually attractive chicks. We, and I think we, the men are now gravitating to the women where- And it's backwards. It's backwards. And, the, and it's we've totally lost backwards. the power yes, indeed. because everyone's an individual contributor. That's why- Snoop Dogg had to apologize to uh, Gail. Gail. Why? Because Snoop is a millionaire, but he out there alone. But if we had Ooh. the media apparatus to mm. say, no, you going to cancel right. Snoop? No, no, come on. No, we, no Snoop mm. is with us. See, as long as, why am I here? I had other stuff to do, but you, this brother has something, and I got something. <laughs> this matters. That matters. Mm. That's this true. matters. It's a connection. And, and, and that's why we tell you. It's and it, and the thing is, we have to stop the the. I, I have a I have a reputation of not beefy. People can say the most egregious things about me. I'm trying to get that reputation. <laughs> Good luck. Because because the thing is, and I made and I started that off long before anybody ever knew who I was. But he's 52 too now. I don't know if he <laughs> had this reputation at 40. Yeah. Well, the thing is, because it ain't about me. I mean, the thing is, I can't really beef with you if I don't know you. Most of the people say stuff, it's about something. And the thing is, if you the audience doesn't want to see that. Mm. They they want to see, we know how that looks. We need to be able to work together. As black men, as men in general, when men working together, women automatically fall into their place. But when we flip it and we start acting catty and beefy and this and that, why do they have to respect that? Why don't, why don't women need to respect some... If you calling me the, this and that and I'm calling you this and that, we act like a bunch of... Anyways. Bitches. Yes. Why, yeah, why we don't we like respect that? Yeah, I agree. Versus if you, if you say something about me and I'm just like, mm, I'll keep moving. And, and you're going about your business and then you work with the people you can work mm-hmm. with and then eventually... You may come back around My and be like, you know what, man? Show. You know what, so dog, I was wrong. I, I thought you was on that bullshit. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't stand your sweet Light looking ass. ass. But you yeah. know what? You just a different kind of dude, but I I heard that you this and that. And guess what? And I'll be like, it's cool, man. Let's go. I don't let's beef. Let's worry let's about get it. Let's this money. Yeah. But do you think we get further if we are able to work together with women and be inclusive? I think that they're two separate issues. Yes. I think I think that prior to it's it's to go back to Malcolm X, right? Malcolm X, when asked that question about working with white people, his immediate response was, I think that we need to... Well, first of all, they told him not to answer that question. (laughs) Whole nation of Islam. They said, don't you... No, no, I'm not talking about that question. I'm not talking about that one. When they asked him, um, could white people help the cause, et cetera, et cetera, initially, he said no. He said, we have to learn how to champion our own selves Mm -hmm. first and, and regulate our own selves first mm-hmm. prior to accepting outside outsiders Council. into our situation. Mm-hmm. So I think what he's saying is, as men, and more important, more specifically black men, until we can gather and commune and learn how to regulate ourselves, women can't really fight for our cause. See, you say work with women, and I say we need to be able to employ our women. Employ our women, work with women, the same thing as far as I'm concerned. When we have an economy, if they choose to work in corporate America, their own businesses, but if you also have a thriving economy to where they can work in, guess what? It's a hell of a lot easier to have respect for somebody when you see a man in the household, Mm -hmm. a man running businesses, Mm -hmm. a man running the police department, fire department, everything around you. Like Mm -hmm. I grew up in a neighborhood where I saw black male teachers. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's this. I think the, the I'll, I'll I'll find this podcast and I'll put it down at the bottom. When boys see men in uh, 
teaching roles, the, their outcomes improve dramatically because male teachers, we don't have those I anymore. Agree. And, and really that's special. another part that we don't have time to get into. Mm -hmm. But when we lost, we, we have lost, there's a book called The Black Tax that talks yeah, about the that. simple loss of black men as right. teachers. The impact the man has, a boy has of seeing a man. I grew up in a single parent household, but everywhere around the seats of power, my principal, the, uh, my band director, at every level of my life, there were men leading stuff. So, you know, I put the responsibility and onus for the leadership, all that stuff, firmly back on us. Yeah, we've talked about, we're talking about women and all this stuff right now, but make no mistake, you know, and I have fallen short because I didn't see this stuff growing up. That's Nobody true. talked mm -hmm. about That's true. this. That's true. We mm -hmm. are building the airplane while we're flying it, and I will never sit back and try to hold myself up as some bastion of what's right and wrong. Are you kidding me? Come on, man. We've mm -hmm. all done some That's stupid true. shit, some mm -hmm. fuck shit. Mm -hmm. But the whole point is, are we trying to leave it better than we found it? That's right. I think, and I, I got to run here in a minute, I but know. I think Generation X in particular, we're the first generation that didn't have to go fight a war of any kind. We didn't have to, you know, my, my, my father's generation had Vietnam, and before them they had Korea, before that they had World War II. Generation X, we had the ball kicked out of our hand. We had Reaganomics, we had crack, then we had AIDS and all that other stuff. Generation X men are going to do is going to be the legacy we leave behind for the other men. You know, we didn't get to have it the way we wanted. We didn't get to be the dads in the household that we didn't get a chance. To say we, we wanted that stuff. We didn't get a chance. But we can choose to say, even though I couldn't have it that way, can I hand the baton off to the next group of men and give them something to run into so they don't have to keep reinventing this motherfucking wheel and doing it all over and over again and then having to buy vie for power with the women. No, 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 no. If we are doing what we're supposed to be doing, let us build our power base, work together, build our economies, and then women have the opportunity to say, you know, if I want to work in that structure or do I want to go work over on this structure? More often than not, history has shown women are really good with accepting when they can actually see men do something. Not just bump your gums, no, no talk a good no game, game, show your work. And they, they say that. So They say that. Listen, man. Round of applause. <laughs> Round of applause. Oh, we need a part two. Kev, well, Kev, he, he said he's Like, I wanted to get into the civil rights and what do you think that effect on us had, like, et cetera, et cetera. I think. Uh, yeah, and I'll be here in a couple of three weeks. And see, the thing is, my, my goal is to have just a better outcome, better conversation. We got to start talking to one another instead of at each other. Because mm -hmm. we get nowhere by ourselves as men. Or, or or with our relationship, and the, one of the, like I said, one of the most impactful things I've seen is young men see me walking by me like, and I'm and I remember remember, remember me and Joe Green and he threw that T-shirt mm -hmm. mm -hmm. had that impact. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I kind of got that feeling with some of these young dudes that like, man, you be out there sliding. I don't know what the fuck some of them be talking. About. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but but I see the look in their eye and they're saying I see something you that I admire and respect, and I'm us. like. Gotcha. What's up? No, yeah, that, that, that is what's up. I thank you for coming. I appreciate you. I won't tell the guys that uh, you was trying to actually be like two and a half hours early for his flight. <laughs> I, I won't even tell them. I was like, hey, fam, you, it's all right. You could be 90 minutes early. Uh, round of applause again. Thank you, Kev. Appreciate it. Appreciate if you get a minute when you back out here, you're always welcome. For sure, for you're, sure. You're always welcome, man. We appreciate Likewise. you. And I know you got to go. Parts, you good? Ish, good, you good? good? Ice, we good? We oh, good? good man. Carl, we good? Franklin, we good? Everybody good? We good. All right. All right, man. Listen, keep us in your prayers. Lord knows we need to be there. Until the next time, I bid you adieu. Peace, arrivederci, adios, hasta la vista, so long, goodbye. <laughs> Remember, life is a series of moments and moments pass. So let's make this last as if it's all that we have. And I'm gone. I'll talk to y'all next time. One. New Joe Biden.